set notation, Venn diagrams. We need to make sure we're familiar with them, especially moving on from AS, where everything's just written in words. So we're gonna go through all of these main concepts today, and then we're gonna move on to the more tricky Venn diagram stuff. So uh, I've got this Venn diagram here. I've just put some numbers in random places from one to 10. I want you to write down the elements of this. Now, this is just the Greek symbol xi, xi, however you, for the Greeks who uh, correct me on this, but it basically just means the set. Just think of it as a posh S. So, you'd put it here, but if you don't want to write that, then just write S, innit? So write down the elements of the set. Well, I literally just told you that this is the numbers one to 10. So we use a curly bracket to represent the numbers that are contained within the set that you're interested in. So we're gonna write down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One thing about your sets is it doesn't matter in which order you write the numbers, just make sure there's no duplicates. The next one, A union B, U for union. Together, we are strong. In, um, AS, we would have said or, A or B. What numbers are in A and what numbers are in B? Or, yeah, whatever. Uh, I didn't write down which one's A, which one's B, it doesn't even matter. We'll do an alphabetic order. So what's in A or B? Well, we have two, five, four, 10, seven, and eight. I'm gonna write an order just because that's just the way my brain works. So two, four, five, seven, eight, 10. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, okay, cool. The next one, A intersection B. That N meaning N for and. This is and, okay, what's in A and B? What's in both of them? Four and 10 only. This one, A dash, A dash means not A. Sometimes you might see as A with a C, which means A complement. You're not really complementing A, when you say, I don't want anything in it. So, you look at A, you just ignore that. We have one, three, one, three, uh, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, those are the numbers not in the circle of A. Now, we can't really address this in this Venn diagram, so I just added it as an extra. What is meant by a circle with a line for it. It just means the empty set, okay? So this just means the empty set, or the set is empty, okay? So if I said in this context, what's in, what's in C, there is no circle of C, you'd say it's empty, okay? Right, what does this say? Now I'm not gonna write it down, but we'll go term by term. This is saying the set well, to describe the set, what is the kind of, um, yeah, what is the description of the set? The description of the set is X such that. So this vertical line means such that. We can use a colon. So it's saying X such that X is an element of the natural numbers. Now, this is heavily debated about what the natural numbers are. The natural numbers are 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. So it's the positive integers. Now, I don't include zero in this. It depends what type of mathematician you are, but generally speaking, n is the counting numbers. Okay, positive integers. Zero is neither positive or negative. Okay, so what was I saying? x such that x is an element of the natural numbers. However, x cannot be three. That's all it's saying. It's saying x is on the number line, the integers, but just not three. So that's what that says. Right, let's move on to these. Let's make sure we understand what is being shaded. Now, over here, it looks like I'm very close to shading all of A. However, I'm just excluding C, all right? Now you might be wondering, does B have anything to do with this? It doesn't. Because you have A, which has overlaps with B. Imagine C wasn't there. If C wasn't there, the whole of circle A would have been shaded. It's just when C comes in, you get this partition here. So you can think of it as like moving circles. It's when you move C back in that this partition is formed. 
So this literally just says A, so we have this uh, shading of A. And we do not want anything to do with C. So and we do not want anything to do with C. So that's all it says. Or the next one. This one, we clearly see that we have this kind of overlap with A and B. Okay, so that literally says A and B. All right, now remember I described it to you in terms of the moving circles. So we have this overlap with A and B. It's just this C again is just causing issues, okay? So we just want nothing to do with C. So the difference between these two is that B is now involved, okay? So and we do not want anything to do with C again. Bon C, bon AC. The last one is, again, it's to do with A. We have this whole circle of A being shaded. However, what has come into play that has messed things up? It's this overlap this overlap here. Now you could say it's this middle bit. The middle bit here is A and B and C. You could say, okay, I want A, but I do not want the overlap between all the circles, which is A and B and C. However, we don't want to complicate this. We want to use as little letters as possible. I could, instead of thinking of it as just this tiny portion, I could think of it as the overlap between B and C. So I have this circle of A and I'm taking out this overlap. It's this overlap which, when introduced, uh, forms this uh, gap. So we want A again. We want A. And we do not want the overlap. Now this overlap here is the overlap between B and C. Now we need to use a bracket here. We do not want that overlap. Okay? So these are just different ways in which we can think about these problems, all right? Right, let's just finish off with this. It says, given that the probability of A is 0.25, the probability of B is 0.42, and the probability of A and B is 0.17, find the probability of A or union B. A or B is this, all right? Now, with all Venn diagram questions, guys, just do a sketch. So we have A, we have B. You don't even have to put a box around it if you don't want to, but I recommend you do. Always start with the middle, just like at GCSE, we have 0.17. And then the probability of A is 0.25. So we're going to take those away, right, which is 0 0.08. 0 0.08. And the probability of B, which is 0 0.42, we're going to take those away, which I think is 0 0.25, but you can never be too sure these days. Yeah. So if I want the probability of A or B, I'm just adding them all up. Now there's a quick way of doing that. You know the probability of A is 0.25. So you're doing 0.25 plus 0.25. The answer here is 0 0.5. Now it says the event C, so this new event C, has probability of C is 0 0.11. The events A and C are mutually exclusive. Given that the probability of A or B or C is 0 0.8, Find the probability of B and C. All right, we're going to draw a new picture. Let's just very quickly discuss what it means to be mutually exclusive because students always confuse mutual exclusivity with independence. Now, mutually exclusive means the circles do not overlap with each other. All right? So, if A and C are mutually exclusive, they're saying that these circles do not overlap. All right? And it means that, because they've said B and C, B and C are overlapping, and we already know B overlaps with A. Now, independence, they do overlap. It's just this intersection is not determined by any of the other two happening or influencing, influencing each other. To get the probability of A and B, it's just the probability of A times the probability of B. They have nothing to do with each other, okay? Just like flipping a coin and getting heads, and rolling a die and getting one. You would do a half times a sixth, okay? They're independent from each other. So that's what that's to do with. So we're going to draw a new picture where A and C do not overlap. Now, this diagram here is, is helpful for me. I'm just going to write down these numbers in succession. 
So let's uh, draw a picture of the circles that are looking like the Olympics. So you have A, B, C. This A was 0 0.08. This overlap here was 0 0.17. They've said, so this here is 0 0.25. They've told me that this circle is 0 0.11. So this here is 0 0.11. But that's including the intersection. They did say that the probability of A or B or C is 0 0.8. That's all of these circles together. They want me to find the probability of B and C, or I, I want me to find myself that value. So, because I wrote the question. So I don't know what that is, I'm gonna call it X. So that means this section here will be 0 0.11 minus X. And this section is gonna be 0 0.25 minus X. So if this is 0 0.17, we found this to be 0 0.25. It's gonna be 0 0.25 subtract X. So 0 0.25 minus x. And we're literally saying that all of that adds up to 0 0.8. So doing this plus this, which was 0 0.25, we know the probability of a is 0 0.25, plus 0 0.25 is 0 0.5, 0 0.5 plus 0 0.11 is 0 0.61. Minus x plus x cancels, then we just get minus x is 0 0.8. And when you rearrange x is what, 0 0.19? Yeah. So there you go, the probability of b and c is 0. Point, wait, 0 0.19? That seems awfully large. That would make that negative. I'm going to have to change this slightly because I made this just before uh, I wrote the question. I could make this just slightly smaller. Let's make it 0 0.7. Neil does adaptation. Because you want to keep that positive, right? So what does that become? 0 0.09. You guys saw nothing, yeah? Now it works. I'm happy with it. But, guys, that's our introduction to set notation. I'd really appreciate if you hit the like button, subscribe for more maths content, and if you're interested in my A-level maths courses, link is down in the description. And if you want to submit your own questions, feel free to check out Lung Gang on Reddit and get feedback from the community from the questions you send in, innit? But yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Nice one, Mike.